In this lesson, we're going to talk about simple patterns of inheritance. So what is inheritance, basically? So before we do that, we have to talk about who Gregor Mendel is, because Gregor Mendel, by understanding who that person was, we can understand how inheritance came to be. So Gregor Mendel was basically the person who discovered genetics. Okay, so he discovered genetics. He studied pea plants. Which, in turn, because of that, he discovered patterns. That there are patterns in how things inherit traits. Discovered patterns of inheriting traits. So what is the principle, principle of independent assortment? Well, what's going on here is that basically what this principle states is inheriting one trait does not affect inheriting another. So for example, We'll ignore these words dominant recessive for now. But just for example, if a plant inherits purple flowers, it doesn't mean it's going to be tall. It could be purple flowers and short. Likewise, it could have green seed colors, but round shape, for example. So inheriting one trait does not inherit, affect inheriting the other. So because of that, what did Mendel find? What Mendel found was this, okay? So when he cross aka crossing means mating okay when you cross two different purebreds he knows that only one of the parents featured show so for example if you crossed tall and short Plants, right? Only tall showed. So that's so. For example, let's say another one. Let's say you crossed green pea pod plants and yellow pea pod plants. What you notice is only yellow showed, for example, or only green showed. There was not a blend. Okay, so it wasn't blended. But what he did next was what kind of um, got him interested, which was that now, next he crossed the offsprings. So what he did was he took now the offsprings of the first crossing, so he took the tall plants again this time. He noticed that now, now it is a 3 to 1 ratio of tall to short. So now he noticed that now short plants are showing, but now there's a three to one ratio. So that is very interesting. How in the first generation of crossing, he only had tall plants, while in the second generation, he knows now it's a three to one ratio for the hundreds and thousands of plants he uh, crossed. Um, that is what led him to really start studying these. So what is this what's going on here well first of all before we get to that we gotta talk about traits what are traits and how they work so basically genetics is a study of how traits are passed so that's how it's passed from parent to offspring And we know that traits comes from our genes because it comes from D, uh, our DNA. But what we don't know is that we actually have the fact that genes come in pairs. 
one from each parent. Because in science nine, you will learn that we have what we call homologous chromosomes. We have 46 chromosomes, but 23 pairs. And each chromosome has a pair of itself, which is from a different parent. Because of that, each of those two chromosomes that are a pair have the same gene on them. So for example, you could have hypothetically a gene in your body for red eyes and, I don't know, purple eyes, for example. So which leads us to the word alleles. What are alleles in? They're basically different genes for the same trait. So example would be eye color, hair color, and so forth. They are just, what that means is that, as we said, red eyes and purple eyes, those are alleles because they are for eye color. All right. Which leads us to dominant recessives. We talked about this earlier, but what is it? What dominant and recessive are is that they are, are alleles in the sense that a dominant gene prevents a recessive gene from showing. which means that it itself will show. So a dominant gene prevents a recessive gene from showing. Um, so that, so how does that work? Well, in this case, it is represented by a letter, by a capital letter. While a recessive gene is one that only shows if there's no dominant. So this one's represented by a lowercase. So note how we just talked about how you have um, a pair of these alleles in you. Now you can have a pair of dominant, you can have a pair of recessive, or you can have one of each, a dominant and recessive. And that will change how and what how what traits you're gonna show because of that. So how do dom recessive traits work? Well, let's do an example. So these are your thumbs. Now each of you listening to this has a different version of these thumbs. This is called straight thumb. And the other one on the right side, that one is called hitchhiker's thumb. So go try it out. See what kind of thumb you have when you give a thumbs up. Okay. Now straight thumb, this is dominant. And we can use a letter to represent thumbs. In this case, let's use T. So in this case, this is capital T. Hitchhiker thumb, this is recessive. And that means it's represented by the lowercase version of it, which is lowercase t. So you always use the same letters to talk about the um, same alleles. All right. So remember I said you, you always inherit a pair of these. What that means is if you inherited both genes as straight thumb, so two capital T's, you're going to show a straight thumb. So that means you have a straight thumb, if that's what the genes you have in your body. If you had a dominant and recessive, remember this, the definition, dominant genes prevents a recessive from showing. That means dominant straight thumb will prevent recessive from showing. So if you have a capital T and lowercase t, you still have straight thumb. So the only way you will show a hitchhiker's thumb is if you have both lowercase t. And this is what we call hitchhiker's thumb. So, why is that important? Because this is the way in which our traits show. Because we, again, we have pairs of these genes in our body, how these genes interact will determine what traits will show. So now, 
If you now look at the word homo homozygous or heterozygous, homozygous sounds like homologous, for example. It just means the same. When the two genes are the same, it's homozygous. And when they're different, they're heterozygous. So for example, we have homozygous dominant, which means that both genes are dominant. So for example, capital T, capital T. We also have homozygous recessive, which means it's lowercase t, lowercase t. And then last but not least, we have heterozygous, which means we have both a dominant and a recessive. So these are three different ways that we can also call these. So this is again homozygous dominant, this is heterozygous, and this one is um, homozygous recessive. So we're going to come back to these two words now, genotype and phenotype. So the importance of these words and how they affect now is genotype is the information from the genes. Phenotype is a trait that shows. So remember, if we talk about this, then the genotype is the info from genes. So in this case, how do we show the info? Well, we could use the letters. The letters will show us the information, all the information we need. So we use the letters. So for example, capital T, capital T. Phenotype, on the other hand, is the trait that shows. And because of that, it is the trait, so we use the trait. So in this case, capital T, capital T is straight thumb. So this is how we represent genotype phenotype this way. So hopefully you have a better understanding of how our inheritance of traits work. And as always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.